Hello and welcome. My name's Alan and we are back with more. I guess you could say it's a video on trust and monopolies. Although it's dealing with looking at everything after the big uh, exposing that Boeing received because it shows how much stringent regulations are needed they can cry oh it's a free market economy I must love it. all they fucking want but apparently it's screwing us over now, I got two, well, if I can work the com computer, I've got two articles here pulled up. One from the Pew Research Center. It's a uh, poll from July of 2021. And it's just over the major technology companies, but... 56% of Americans support more regulation on major technology companies. And I'll tell you what, if you ask them about other areas, they would say, yes, there needs to be more regulation there, too. <sighs> you notice, it's the middle of the road people who are like, no, 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 no. No, it's fine. Both Democrats and Republicans sitting there at that middle of the road level, if they're the moderates or just lean in one direction or the other, they're like, no, no, we don't need uh, regulation. While you look at the more sides, they're the ones that say, yeah, regula more regulations can be a great thing. But again, this is just the major technology companies. But like I said, you ask them about other industries, they'd probably go, yeah, yeah, they need uh, more regulations too. Because like I said, with the current way Boeing's been exposed as just a money-hungry monster, yeah. I guarantee you there's other fields they'd be like, yeah, there needs to be more regulation on this too. But, again, all you hear cry from the uh, free market protectors. Oh, regulations hurt business. Bull! Bull! What you need is more regulations on big business. They're the ones who can deal with it. Now, you should also have regulations that apply to medium and smaller businesses. However, give them the financial help, aid to help cover these expenses that need to be done. You know, it's common sense stuff. Because you'll hear all the time, oh, regulations hurt small business. Give them the subsidies they need to help cover it. At that point, you're helping small and medium businesses fight back against bigger business. However, when you offer these kind of ideas, there's, there's no, no action. But they'll still cry. Oh, we hurt small business. 
Help them out monetarily. Provide them subsidies. By all means, help small business. But many of y'all just don't care. You just want the airtime saying, I care about small business. No, you don't. Because you don't put actions behind your words. But yeah. Majorities of Republicans and Democrats say tech companies have too much power and influence. It's so ridiculous. See, this is stuff the two sides can agree on for the most part. But it's like they act like they're complete and utter opposites of one another. And thus, you're my enemy. I must kill you on the field of political battle. Hiss. <laughs> it's like, really, dude? Yeah, 60% of conservative Republicans, liberal Democrats, have heard at least a fair amount about the debates around regulating major technology companies. So yeah, around 60% on the far reaches. Again, the disappointments are in the middle, the moderates. Because guess what? They're usually the ones who are paid big money to kiss the butt of corporations. Because guess what? Manchin and Christian Cinema were. They were conservative Democrats. Yeah, I hate moderacy. You either pick an ideology or you pick one and say, I don't belong to them. Which is, again, getting back to my ideas that we need more than just two political parties, but that's not what this video is about. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Technology is needed. We saw a door tear off the side of an airplane in mid-flight. If there, if that don't require regulations, I don't know what's going to convince you we do need regulations. But still, and then we got an article from Vox here. I haven't even really looked at this, but I thought, well, let's look at the title. How to think about Boeing's recent safety issues. Um, flying is extremely safe, but Boeing's safety issues are real. Yeah, just by pure numbers. We know flying is a safe way to travel, but there are clearly some things going on where regulations would help so much. Another week, another series of bad news stories for Boeing. On Monday, 50 people were injured. None were killed in, when a 787 dropped abruptly mid-flight from Sydney to Auckland. That same day, the New York Times reported that the FAA investigation into the production of the 737 MAX jets found the company failed 33 of 89 product audits at the factory where the planes were being built. 
The FAA's inspection was connected to the alarming incident in which the door plug blew out of a Max 9 mid-flight on January. So, yeah. <laughs> it's worth underscoring. Air travel remains extremely safe. Uh, the number of Americans killed on U.S. commercial flights in the last 10 years is two. During the same period, 365,000 Americans were killed in car crashes. However, you must also look at the percentage of travel, not just flat numbers. I think that's kind of a misleading figure. How many flights, how many deaths, how many cars on the road, how many deaths? That should be, it's a percentage we should look at. In fact, the reason Bowen's recent failures have attracted so much scrutiny is because these type of events are so rare. Yeah, still. That said, reporting on Boeing's plane problems and reading... Wizzy Kim's piece from late July, January diving deep into corporate issues at the company uh, have me want more appreciative of the risks post posed by a combination of profit-driven corporate culture, inadequate regulation, and restrained resources. So yeah, even he recognized this. Regulations inadequate, and this was the other part of this video I wanted to talk about. Profit-driven corporate culture. They will do anything to make that extra buck. They don't care if it hurts or kills people. As long as it makes them the money they need. A few lives don't matter. We see this all the time. Buyback stock. Cut corners to make things cheaper for the investors, the stock investors. That should not be what you're focused on. But instead, that's where their mindset sits. And honestly, we need companies put in temporary hiatus from the stock market if that's the way they play the game. We need to be firm-handed with these companies. Backhand them hard. If all you care about is corporate profits, you need a public seizure by the government to have a temporary removal until company policy has changed. So yeah, this profit-driven stupidity Needs to end. I mean, that's clear as a... That's clear as a bell. Trying not to swear as much. But yeah. I mean, it sounds pretty simple to me. Do things to make the lives of the average citizen better. Even if it has to be at the expense of oh, a few stock traders lose millions if they don't have the stocks of our company. <laughs> Who cares? What matters is that they're doing what they're supposed to do. Making things that are beneficial. 
to the people. Your products should not break down consistently but that's where the mind is let's make more profit more honestly it, it's stupid and it needs to end it really does we need a firmer regulatory system and a way to push back on profit-driven evil and corporate vice. But yeah, I'm just listing Boeing here because for me it's a great example of all the BS that's going on that needs to seriously stop. Because it isn't just in Boeing. It's in a lot of industry sectors. But, we'll go ahead and end this episode, episode, episode here. As always, educate thyself. Think, read, study, learn. Someone tells you something you have trouble believing. Ask them to cite their sources. I'll be putting links to these two stories, two articles in the description box below the video. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all in the next one. Until then, later.